In this video, I'm going to show you how I edit a video in Reaper. Hey guys, I'm Dr. McFarland and welcome back to the channel. I am in the process of making a video for the channel and I figured I would show you how I do that. And back in January, I started using Reaper for all my video editing, which I've done a little bit of that in the past. But after I found out about John Tidy's video pack that gives you extra options that the default options doesn't give you in Reaper, then I decided to do it full time and really uh, dive in deep. What I'm gonna show you is just my basic workflow. And it's not gonna be super in depth. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show you how to do like text or you know, all that different stuff, which I can, which, but in this video, I'm not really gonna use text or a lot of fancy stuff. It's just gonna be lining up the footage, editing what I don't want and all that fun stuff. So what you see here on the right side is the folder that has the actual Reaper session, and I have some other footage in here. So let me go ahead and make a new folder. I'm gonna call this footage, and then just put all the footage in there. So what I have is footage from a Canon M50, a GoPro, and a screen capture of the uh, Superior Drummer 3 down here. So what I've done so far is I have lined things up. I don't want this to be the main part of the screen. So there's a few ways I can go about this. So I do have a monitoring section here that shows me some guidelines. So I can see actually where I'm at on the screen and see how things are gonna fit on the screen as well. So first things first, this is the screen recording of the uh, SD3 footage right here. So I'm gonna click on the little effects icon, go to all plugins, video processor, and then go to preset, and I'm gonna go to Reaper blog video controls. Now, once again, this is something that John Tidy put together. He has all the video controls, text overlay, simple text overlay, color controls, black and white filter, I mean, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, drawbox automation, which I hadn't really dived into yet. Now here's the 16 by nine safe area guide, which is what I have in the monitoring section. And the reason why I have it on the monitoring section and not on an actual track or on the actual master bus is it's just for monitoring. It's, just, it's not gonna be applied to the actual video itself once I render it down. Let's go ahead and choose video controls. You can see that it gives me the scale and zoom, horizontal, vertical, crop, you know, left, right, top, bottom, opacity, stuff like that. One thing I am gonna have to figure out is how to rotate a video. I know the GoPro footage might need to be turned a little bit. Um, what I can do from here is I can copy and paste to the other clips so i'm just going to paste that in and then this is the gopro so let me rename this gopro and this is the m50 now this is the actual audio for the video up here so i'm just simply going to turn down the fader for the actual video footage because I don't need the audio from that because I've recorded the audio onto two separate tracks. I have a drum track that is the output of the SD3. Then I have the YouTube music that I played along with. Okay, I probably will get a copyright strike for that because I just got done doing a live video that didn't really turn out that great, which is why I'm doing a pre-recorded video. And I already got an email saying, hey, you got a copyright strike. So I'll be sure to make my own backing track in the future, but I just want to do a quick, dirty drum playing. And that's just what happened. So what I'm going to do, let's go back to SD3 footage and check this out. If I change the opacity, then the SD3 went away and now you can see me. 
All right. Now, more than likely, I can cut different sections and just make the opacity of the different video clips to where it's flowing in and out of different views. I can do it that way. Or I can have all three clips showing at one time and, you know, just taking up uh, the different parts of the screen. So for instance, let's make this one up here. Whatever is on the top, that's what's going to show. So if I turn the opacity back up here, you still can't see it because the M50 footage is on top of the SD3 footage. Okay. Same goes for the GoPro. So what I'm going to experiment with is let's make this smaller. Okay. Like that. And then we can move it over. You can see me do that by changing the horizontal and also the vertical sections there. Okay. Now, like I said, you can see the GoPro stuff happening. And I'll go ahead and make that smaller. And we can move that over here. Something like that. We'll bring it up. Something like that. So it's not the greatest. I would prefer to have this, you know, going a different way. But that's actually, that's actually fine. Um, we can make it a little bit smaller, maybe. And then same thing with the M50 footage. We'll make this just a tad smaller. We'll move this over. And we'll move it up. So you can kind of see the drum three right there. Now what I'm going to do for the SD3 footage is let's go ahead and crop it. So let's go crop left and let's crop right. Let's get rid of all that other excessive stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and crop the bottom. Actually, that's the top, sorry. Crop the top, crop the bottom. So this process is definitely a more manual way of doing things. I just can't take the footage and drag it around. I have to do everything within this box. But it's not that bad. So let's move this over here and let's move it down like that. And let's make it maybe a little bit smaller. So what I'm thinking is let's fade this in like so. And I can probably just have like a Dr. McFarland Studios intro thing. So let me bring that in here. So Nathan video, video elements. And let's bring this down. I can bring this up there and let's actually stretch this out like so so check this out right, so there's my dr mcfarland thing coming in So this is interesting here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm seeing a slightly different way to frame this. So I have all this extra space over here that I'm pretty sure the drum set could fit into. So what we're going to do is check this out. We're going to go here. We're going to move it horizontally like so. And we're going to bring it up. Yeah, like that. And then I can adjust that here in a second. But then the GoPro is going to move 
over and down. So let's bring this over here, like so. And now with the SD3 footage, I can actually probably make this a little bit bigger like that. Change the vertical zoom. All right, so that looks pretty good. Let's check it out from here. I think it looks pretty good. And what I want to do now is let's put in the, what's it, thinks. All right, so this is going to be the end of the song. There's the last 20 seconds. All right, not bad. Let's have this be a little bit sooner. So this goes there. Like that. Check it out. Now. Yeah. And there's me playing. And it fades. Bam. Okay. There you go. That is how I make a YouTube video. I'm going to put an end marker there. And let's make this be, see where it's going to start. Okay, it's going to start about right there. So let's move this up. Maybe bring this back a little bit. Give it some buffer. Some buffer room. All right, cool. I like that. So we're going to make a timeline selection, which is really fun. Make sure this ends where I want it, about right there. All right, now what I've been doing here lately is I just do Shift R and that creates a region up top. And then I right click on the region, hit render region. And I go to MPEG is 30 frames per second, you know, 1080p, high resolution audio, all that stuff. And I'm just gonna call this Final, and then hit browse, hit directory, hit go to my five terabyte hard drive, video footage backup, drum jams. So there's my footage folder. So I'm gonna make a new folder called rendered. And this is where the video is gonna go. And everything looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit render. Okay, you can see that the audio levels are hitting, you know, still pretty high. I didn't really master this video, nor did it really need to. I mean, we got a nice healthy level going on right now. So, but I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and speed through this. And then we'll see you at the other side. All right, there you go. That is the final render. And I'm going to go show in Finder. And there's the file. So let's click on it. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Like so. And then I press play. It is a six minute and 33 second video. And there you go. Looks good. That's great. So now I'm just going to open up YouTube, you know, name it, 
tag it, put a description in, all that fun stuff, and it'll go up on the interwebs. So thanks, guys, for watching. If you are interested in learning more about music theory, gear, recording, understanding how I can play drums and bass and guitar and piano and all these other instruments, then definitely consider signing up to be a member of the community of confident musicians on my website. And that's where you can grow as a musician and take your confidence to a higher level. All right. So thanks guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe down below. Give me a thumbs up, share the video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about the playing or the horrible playing or whatever you thought. So Thanks guys for watching. I'm Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.